Hi everyone, we are here at the Foodlink facility at Mount Reed Boulevard, an impressive facility, so impressive that people want tours of this. Joining me right now to help us out with this, Julia Tedesco, President and CEO of Foodlink. Because of the pandemic, not many tours going on right now. That's right. But people do want a look inside, and this is one of the hot spots right here, the kitchen. What goes on here? This is our Foodlink community kitchen. We built this new facility about five years ago now, but we've been running a kitchen for 17 years. A lot of people don't know that in addition to food banking, we do healthy meal production. In this kitchen, every single day, we prepare somewhere between 4,000 and 6,000 healthy meals for children throughout the city of Rochester. And those meals go directly to sites all across the city, from YMCA's to after school centers to libraries to RCSD sites. Unbelievable. And the thing is, too, what people don't often understand is how creative they are in there. It's not just about the quantity, but the quality. The real genesis of this kitchen was to raise the bar on institutional food service. Our goal was to provide the highest quality, most nutritious meals to the children who need it the most. Everything in this kitchen is made from scratch. We have an executive chef, Casey Hollenbeck, who leads the team of really talented cooks in there, in addition to our Foodland Career Fellows, who are going through um, a workforce development program, learning how to be chefs, and really their end goal is to provide the best meals possible to kids. And here's another fun aspect about the kitchen. It has something to do with apples. Yeah, so in addition to producing thousands of meals every single day, we have a social enterprise business that we run out of this kitchen, which is a value-added sliced apple line, where we are taking New York State-grown apples, most of them coming from Wayne County, slicing them, putting them into single-serving bags, and they're going out to hundreds of school districts across the state to make sure that, again, kids are getting access to New York State-grown healthy produce, really improving their diet. All right, so we just talked about what's happening here at the facility. Now we're going to talk about what's shipped from the facility. We're gonna head there now. All right, so here we are, and I guess why don't we start with this, where are we? We are in the Foodlink Distribution Center right here on Mount Reed Boulevard. It's a 100,000 square foot warehouse from which we distribute about 20 million pounds every single year to the surrounding 10 counties. Incredible, and it reinforces the point that not only do you serve food, but you work as a food bank to serve food pantries. That's correct. There's a real uh, difference between a food bank and a food pantry, and the difference is really the scale at which we operate. So we are part of the Feeding America network of food banks. It's a nationwide network. Anywhere you go in the country, any county or zip code, it is served by one of the 200 food banks. And then we in turn have a network of about 500 nonprofit agencies that are members of Foodlink. These are soup kitchens, food pantries, other community centers or meal programs that source their food from Foodlink and we distribute that to them. The logistics here, I mean. It's a, it's a big operation. We have about 100 staff members now. We have a fleet of 15 or more vehicles that are distributing across 7,000 square miles. Um, and it really, it operates like any for-profit distribution center. It's just that we have a different mission and that is to feed those in need. Wonderful. And a lot of this does not work without volunteers and we're gonna be talking about them next. Before we get to the volunteers, we wanna stop here. This is produce and I think that that's an important point to make is that it's not just cans or boxes that you guys are sending out. That's right. People when they think of food banking tend to think of that dented can but we really we distribute as I mentioned over 20 million pounds of food and last year a quarter of that food was fresh produce. We get product from the USDA from federal government. We get it from a retailers like Wegmans who donates over six million pounds every single year. We get it from manufacturers who donate really good case product and we also purchase a lot of food to complement all that we get donated. And that's where a lot of public support dollars go. And we invest in fresh produce. We know that it's our responsibility if we're feeding people to make sure that they have healthy components to every single meal. And so we've invested a lot in local farms, New York State farms, and in produce from across the country to make sure that people have that healthy food. Yeah, helps farms and helps the people who eat the food. That's I love right. it. All right, next we're gonna talk about getting the food outside of the building. We're going curbside. So we have stepped outside to see what Foodlink does outside this facility and you got a fleet here. We've got a fleet. These are our curbside market vehicles. They operate as farmers markets on wheels and we are at in 
pre-COVID times, we were at about 100 different stops in five counties every single week. Our goal is to get to areas that have low access to healthy, affordable, nutritious food. So we go to Rochester Housing Authority sites, areas where there's a density of people, low-income folks who, again, don't have access to retail um, grocery stores. It's a really exciting program and it also creates a lot of synergy with some of our other programming. So some of the produce that we sell in here comes directly from our urban farm on Lexington Ave and we oftentimes pair up this uh, vehicle and some of our stops with our nutrition education uh, courses so that people not only get access to fresh fruits and vegetables, they learn how to use those and how to prepare meals with them. And people can see you out in the community. That's so. right. Very good. Julia, this is tremendous. I promised you we were going to see the folks who give of their time to make all of this work we're gonna hit that up right now so Julia talked about the hundred plus employees here but you have a lot of other folks who actually work here in a sense absolutely we would not be able to do the work that we do every single year without the volunteers that come in so we are standing in the main room where our volunteers operate they help to sort donated food inspect it make sure that it's safe for human consumption and that um, we categorize it properly to get out to the agencies that we serve and you know what this says to me this says that as we try to come out of the pandemic to me this is where we can start to rebuild community. Absolutely. We've seen a lot of people, we've had to limit the number of volunteers coming in, and we've had a lot of people begging us to come back because they miss that sense of community. They miss the opportunity to give back. And so it really is a two-way street, but we couldn't be more grateful for all that they, they lend um, to our mission and making it possible. Yeah, and they know the need that's out there. Absolutely. So Julia Tedasco, president and CEO of Foodlink, giving me a tour so I can kind of, in a way, give you a tour and hopefully in the coming months, you can come in and see it for yourself. Thanks so much. Thank you, Adam.